Our next speaker then is Minister Paul Caffey, who's State Secretary of the Norwegian Ministry of Local Government and Modernisation. And he's also been a Member of Parliament uh, from 89 to 97. And I have to tell you, he's very good. In fact, it's great we have all these speakers. But Paul has taken time out from an election. And you know for politicians, that's very <laughs> precious time. Uh, the election is at the end of the week, I understand. And Paul will outline how cooperation on digital issues between the Nordics and the Baltics is developing and how it might offer a template for other digital forerunners. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me. Uh, this is a very, very important, interesting discussion uh, between um, countries and people who want to do uh, a lot in this area. So I took time off. We have our elections are on Monday in just oh, over a week. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the polls are extremely close at the moment, and we get about two or three new ones every day, so it's quite exciting at the moment. Uh, but then, yes, I am a politician uh, in the Ministry of Local Government and Modernization, where we put sort of public sector across the board, both local and, and central government. And of course, the digital is becoming more and more important in everything we're doing. But what I've been asked to talk about is one initiative. Uh, at a Nordic Baltic level, uh, that is uh, that comes out of the Nordic uh, Council of Ministers, where Norway has the presidency. Uh, it's a lot smaller than the EU uh, presidency, but it's some of the uh, same countries, and uh, we think we can make a difference in cooperating between the countries in 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 some areas here as front runners, where we don't compete with the EU, we're not an alternative to the EU, but we can show the way in some areas uh, where small countries that have come quite far in some areas might make uh, that difference by doing things together yeah. and not uh, on their own all the time. Uh, and then I have to say too that when I meet people from other countries in Europe or uh, other places in the world, they often say that, well, you Nordics, you're so lucky because you're so far in front and you've solved these things and you have broadband and mobile and everything. And uh, I, uh, my answer to that is yes, uh, we are lucky in the sense that we have a good starting position. But changing, changes are ha happening so quickly now that uh, you might become too complacent sometimes if you have that good position. Uh, we have to increase the pace, the tempo in what we're doing as well. And this is uh, one way of doing it. Just uh, briefly, a few words on the Norwegian context first. Uh, our strategies in the digital area, both e-government and the broader strategies, we presented to Parliament about... Uh, one and a half years ago, it was discussed in Parliament uh, last year, uh, uh, a white paper which goes through the strategies, the priorities. It's much less of a technological document than these things have been previously, not a list of projects. We went to in Estonia, in fact, and heard about them. They, they, they've got something called the X road that everyone's heard about, and we wanted to go there to touch and feel the X road. And they told us that the X road doesn't exist as a technology. It's a set of <laughs> principles that you have to follow uh, when you are a uh, government. And if everyone does that, you have one system. Uh, well, one thing we did was to say that the, the, the aim of what you, we're doing is not being digital, it's not the technology, it's mm. creating a simpler society for our citizens. It's economic growth, it's inclusion, to get more people on board uh, in, in different areas. Uh, and the ways we do that is to use digital tools in uh, modernizing government in more and more areas. We have some principles we need to both implement and follow, like digital by default, that any public entity is digital by default, and then sometimes, but not always, you can apply to get uh, information in, in other channels. Uh, automating public services, once only principle, the Estonians uh, told us a lot about. If we know something about the citizens, why do we ask them again about the same mm. information? It must be much easier to reuse information. Mm. With the challenges we have in, in privacy, of course, because we have a legislation that says you're only allowed to use the information for what it was collected for. So we have to balance these things. Uh, sharing public data, getting more and more important, both for business, mm -hmm. but also internally in government. Uh, the projects, 
I mean, we, we're, we're, we're good at a lot of things, but we've also had projects that have been terribly bad and ended up where they shouldn't end up, like in the hearings in Parliament, which is not the place to be for an IT project. And the whole challenge of how do you, how do you uh, split up the projects uh, from these giant things we're doing into small and modular, modularized, where it's easier to take risk and easier to make mistakes because you can change your, the course. Uh, when you discover that you're, you're on the wrong track and get external evaluation of uh, on, on whether you're on the wrong or right track. And cooperating with the private sector, using the market, not developing things ourselves that someone else is better at, which is often quite difficult for governments to understand because we think we're so special that we have to do <laughs> things all on our own. Uh, this is one example of what we've been doing, logons to public services through our uh, identification gateway. Both municipalities and central government are using that. We differ from some other countries there that we do not have one technology, a government issued card, or, or we, we have that, as well, getting that as well. But we're using the market solutions that the banking sector has for logging on to their services, also into the public uh, sector. If it's good enough to take care of your money, uh, you can probably get public services through the same kind of uh, technology. Uh, but then we, uh, yeah, and we, we're not a member of the EU. Uh, some of us regret that sometimes a bit, but we're trying to be part of as much as possible that the EU is doing and paying for doing that too. Uh, so we be, we're you, invited to the ministerial conference. We're part of the ICT-related programs. But with the presidency in the Nordic Council, we, we, we discussed with our uh, Nordic friends uh, and Baltic uh, neighbors, can we in that area do something uh, more together than we are already doing? The Nordic Council has a long history from back to the 50s. It was in a way a front runner for a common labor market. Uh, we, can, uh, we can work across the Nordic borders without, we, we've had a didn't need to show passports, uh, practical things for ordinary people. Uh, of course, the EU has done a lot of the same things, so that it's in the EU context. But how can we, in the digital uh, space, remove barriers and borders mm -hmm. between our countries and, and uh, uh, also help our businesses uh, compete across uh, the borders? Uh, without, uh, as I said, becoming an alternative to other organizations, but uh, a kind of practical uh, cooperation on, on issues where governments are necessary to, to put things in place, but then others are going to cooperate uh, afterwards to, to make it concrete. We had a high-level meeting, uh, conference with both governments, businesses, and, uh, and uh, yeah, a, a great meeting place in April. Uh, speakers from all over our uh, regions uh, where we wanted uh, experts and, uh, and uh, business leaders to address what, where are the challenges, where are the barriers, uh, and, and explain where they see uh, problems that should be solved and barriers that should be removed. And uh, part of this was that the ministers uh, went back to their, in their own uh, room, had a lunch together, and decided, signed a ministerial declaration. Now, a lot of cynicists would say that ministerial declarations are signed all the time. They don't really uh, uh, contain much more than words. Uh, but this one was a bit different. It's, it's, it focused on three areas where we say that we're going to move on uh, in our cooperation between the three countries. Uh, Cross-border digital services in the public sector between the countries. There is a lot of m mobility, as I mentioned, in, in, in the labor market. And there are problems with bureaucracy when you cross borders and work in another country, uh, help uh, businesses. Yeah, these are the countries. Uh, there are more countries in the Nordics than you might expect because the, the Greenland and the Faroe Islands and, and, uh, and Orland are, are with, but it's, I mean, Denmark, Sweden, uh, Finland, Norway, uh, Iceland and the Baltics, uh, 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 Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia uh, were, uh, were, were part of, uh, of this. Uh, and we, we like to think we, we, we can sometimes be too sectorized, too bureaucratic, but we like to think that in our region, when we are at our best, we don't start matey, making declarations or institutions. We address some practical problems that we need to find the tools to solve. 
And uh, we identified three areas we're going to continue working on. One, as I mentioned, the cross-border digital services in the public sector, reusing uh, identity numbers, for example, and promote uh, the free movement of data, as has been mentioned here already across the borders. Uh, strengthen business competitiveness uh, with a special focus on 5G rollout and the new mobile broadband technologies. All our countries are, are quite far ahead in that area, but we want to keep moving. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have businesses that are uh, both on the service side and on, on, uh, on the industry side. Uh, and it's an interesting area for public services as well. And uh, helping enhancing the single uh, digital market in our region. Uh, pushing the EU to uh, implement uh, what uh, you've been talking about now and show in, uh, in, in practice uh, the advantages of, uh, of doing that. Uh, we haven't had a council of ministers for uh, the digital in the Nordics, so that's being established formally this year. They'll have a meeting at the end of the year. Norway has the presidency this year. Sweden will take over uh, from, uh, from uh, next year. Uh, but we agree very strongly that uh, in uh, a region like ours that uh, wants to be a front runner, uh, mm. we need ministers who meet uh, on the digital issues mm. as, uh, as well. Just one final thing I want to mention. Uh, we, uh, we uh, to not become too self-satisfied, we want others to review what we are doing. And today, in fact, we got uh, a presentation in Oslo uh, I knew what about what was there already, so I, it's, it's, a, it's interesting and, and, and positive report in many ways, but, but points to some of the challenges we have mm. too. When it comes to too much sectorization, when it comes to, uh, to having the necessary speed, this is a mm. public document, any can, any of you can find mm. it online and read uh, where do uh, the people yes. who have reviewed yeah. us uh, think that we have uh, uh, done the right things and where should we uh, do even mm. more to succeed. So uh, thank you for your attention.